The first thing to encounter is treatment. Here you can choose between color and black and white, depending on how you would like to edit your photo. Uh, little thing to notice might be that if you use black and white, vibrance and saturation will be disabled because you're not using color. The second thing you encounter are the profiles. Now the profiles function is to apply an overall look to the photo, a base for you to edit on top of. They don't change any of the settings below like the presets do, but you can think of them as a layer that can be applied on its own or over the top of a preset and it can be controlled with a mount which is an intensity slider and I will show you them right now. We can click here to the to go to the profile browser and then you see that you have Adobe RAW for example, you can choose different profiles and the image looks a bit different in each and every one of them. You can go to the artistic ones and the profiles can help you to have an own look to your photos. I'm picking the 6 for example and like I said with this amount you can kind of determine the opacity of this filter let's say, but it's actually the profile. Let me close this now. Moving on, we have the white balance. No matter what you photograph, there is one thing that you should realize about light, and it doesn't only have color, but it also comes in different temperatures. For instance, if you are photographing indoors, you might recognize how these objects turn yellow, and if you are using the flashlight, on the other hand, they appear bluish. In photography, yellow tones are considered warmer, while bluer tones are considered cooler. Direct sunlight at noon is considered the standard light, and all the other light sources are compared to it. And another thing I wanted to say is while we as humans are equipped with a very sophisticated color system that act automatically adjusts colors in different lighting situations, uh, which is uh, or actually why we don't have this problem of the color temperatures, our cameras aren't. So if an incorrect white balance setting is used in the camera, images might turn out uh, unnatural with bad skin tones and color shifts. Now, if you're shooting in a row like I am here, it is easier to compensate these errors in Lightroom. One way to do that is by using the eyedropper tool. You can click on a spot which looks neutral to you, for example, it's a, a white color or a gray color, and then See right here, the Adobe just adjusted the white balance on its own. Alternatively, you can use these two uh, temperature and tint sliders. If you make the temperature lower, then tones will turn cooler and bluish, and on the other side, they will turn yellowish. The tint can give to the image a greenish or a violetish tone. The fourth thing we will talk about uh, is the tone. Tone is about making the photo or parts of it lighter and darker. Uh, with the help of exposure, for example, you can set the overall brightness of the photo. By sliding it to the right you make it brighter and to the left you make, the, you make it darker. I will leave mine somewhere there. Then you can use the highlights and shadows to recover any lost details after setting the exposure. So here I can use I can bring the highlights a bit lower because I increase the exposure and then I might increase the shadows a little more. Something I wanted to mention is an important term that you will often hear in photography and it's called dynamic range. Basically what it is is the contrast ratio between the darkest and brightest color tones that a camera can capture in a single exp exposure. Uh, that means, in a simplified way, the, how bright can the highlights and how dark can the shadows be within the same pho uh, photo without losing any details. And that's like the highlights will help you with that, will help you have a um, high dynamic range. Uh, the next th thing to talk about is the contrast slider. Uh, when this slider is pushed to the right, uh, the contrast between the lighter and darker mid-tones is increased. When pushed to the left, uh, the contrast is decreased, but remember we're talking about the mid-tones here, so the highlights and the shadows are not affected as much. The whites and blacks, on the other hand, can be used to set the contrast like on the extremes, so to say. 
Now, moving on, we have presence. It is this group right here and is the last group as well. Uh, here we can set the texture of the photo. What the texture does to a photo is that it increases or decreases the contrast of the medium sized details in the image. Now I will demonstrate this by zooming to the wall and then I will move the texture. As you can see, not much is happening because these aren't like medium sized details. But if I do the same thing and I zoom into this flower and I uh, change the texture, big difference this time, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, let me zoom back out. Now, the next thing to talk about is clarity. Clarity increases and or decreases the contrast of the midtones and can be thought of as increasing or decreasing the emphasis or the punch of a picture. For example, if I go into this dark spot here and move the cl clarity, like you can see here, it doesn't change much. But if I go somewhere to the wall, which is like mid-tones, and I move the clarity, then you can see a much bigger difference happening when, when this slider moves again in the entire photo. Uh, you should also notice that clarity also affects the luminance and saturation more than the textures uh, slider does. The third thing in presence is the haze. Now this is used to remove dust, smoke or other dry particles uh, that obscure the clarity of the sky and it can use it can be used also for artistic purposes if you, like if you lower the dehaze filter you can make it look a bit foggy like in this picture it doesn't look so well to me but maybe there are other scenarios where you might need that this is also one of the sliders which is like overly used in photography so uh, you will notice that more often when you start to use it yourself. The last thing to talk about in the basics are saturation and vibrance. Saturation is used to brighten and deepen all the colors of an image if dragged to the right, thus making them pop, or it can be used to remove the colors and eventually like turn the photo into a monochrome if you move it all the way to the left. In principle, Vibrance does the same thing with the color as Saturation does, so if you move them to the right then it will pop the colors, and if you move them to the, right, to the left it will remove them. Uh, but if you use these two filters then you can see like a different result in the image. And the difference is that while Saturation treats the pixels with an already high saturation equally as the pixels with low saturation, Vibrance affects the less saturated pixels of an image more. So colors and pixels that already are saturated are less affected by Vibrance, which means that it is less likely to blow out any colors. So if I zoom in here to this flower and I move the saturation and you look in the heart of, of the flower, which is already saturated, and I move the saturation, then it will kind of blow them out it will continue to increase them. But if I do the same with Vibrance, then you can see how everything else was affected, but the already saturated colors were less affected. And that's the difference between the two. Now that you've heard most of the theory behind the basics in the develop module, it's time to go and play with them yourself. Because as we all know, practice makes perfect. So. Have fun and until next time.